Hello YouTube, Liverpool fan in Japan here, the Miyazaki man, Sai. Right, I've got a great bundle of Liverpool clothes and goodies, right? It's actually called Japanese Fukubukuro Lucky Bags. I've got at least 12 pieces of Liverpool kit for myself and a few for little ones as well. But I need to find the video clips of when I open that stuff. So keep tuned in and I'll open them shortly. But this video is around the tactics I believe can help Liverpool progress in the Europa League past Atalanta. We've done it before, 5-0, and this time we have the personnel to do some real, real damage. Now this tactical formation and strategy that I've come up with, I believe gives us the best chance to progress in this fixture. So I'm going to give you a Miyazaki Man Masterclass in tactics and formation compared with Jurgen Klopp's ideals and what he's probably going to do, and what he's going to set up, which could actually win as well. Now, who am I to compete against Jurgen Klopp, right? He's won everything. He's a Liverpool legend, one of the best ever. He manages Liverpool FC in the Premier League in the UK. I manage Lucha FC, J-League, non-league. That is pretty good though. My boy Ryoma with a mushroom haircut, top scorer, bends it, top corner, left foot. <sighs> Alvaro Recoba, what a player. Kind of plays like him. Back to our beloved Liverpool squad. However, I'm not there on the training ground every day. I don't know these players personally. I don't see them every day. I've got no intrinsic bias. Therefore, I can only pick on personnel attributes to complete the function of my strategy. And let me know in the comments below if you agree with what I'm saying against Jurgen Klopp's favoritism to some players, his philosophy of a particular style and his stubbornness around substitutes. So let's get into it. So the Liverpool squad has played all season in a 4-3-3 and I'm not going to deviate from what they're used to, what they're doing in training every single week, right? There's no point doing fancy football and, you know, miscellaneous 4-2-3-1 formations or three at the back or whatever, okay? So let's start with this as a basis. We know straight away, Alisson Becker, we're going to need him to be top-notch, conceding zero, zilch. Otherwise, our task becomes infinitely more harder, right? If they score one, we need to score at least four, right? We're going to score four anyway. However, this is how we're going to do it. Straight away, we need goals, we need opportunities, Trent's got to come in. I don't know about Conor Bradley's injury, how bad it is, Gomez can't come in this game. It has to be Trent, a wonder kid, he's got some minutes under his belt, he's trying to ping a few balls, and he's going to be a pivotal player. I've got three pivotal players in this formation, not who you would expect. Trent is one of them for sure, okay? Virgil van Dijk, he has the penchant to score goals at set pieces and create goal opportunities, assist with the headers, knock them down as well, and hit the ball out to right wing and progress through the lines with a little run if he so wishes as well. Van Dijk got to come in left side i think pits itself robertson comes in the drive down the left hand side the energy the enthusiasm the defensive solidarity him and van dyke are the secure side of the defense once against Kanate, Kanate has to come in. He is a French international. He's got an added pace, acceleration. He can drive the balls through the lines. He's got aerial dominance as well. Quanta is great, but Quanta is still a kid and he's done very, very well coming in. Hopefully put that mistake against Man United behind him, but Kanate van Dijk is our superior pairing, obviously in the absence of Matip, because Matip is amazing as well. DM. Now, I've heard some criticism around Wataru Endo. Last few weeks looked very, very leggy, not been on form at, at all since that injury. He's been off the pace. Players have gone through him. Okay, true, except the Endo has not been on top form. However, some of our best performances have come when Endo is in the matchup. And let me give you this example, right? And why you must, must play Emperor Endo the Big E in this particular game. And Jurgen Klopp will 100% play Emperor Endo in this game, okay? Because he releases McAllister and Solberside to go forward. But more importantly, Coop Miners, right? On their side, who do you want tracking him like a rabid dog, shackling him, kicking at his ankles, right? The one who breaks the lines, the dummy runner, the shadow runner, in and behind that progresses the play and play makes for the opposition team. The one that floats around in our defensive sixth position. You don't want McAllister chasing him, which absolutely nullifies McAllister's positioning and attacking threat going forwards, and we need goals. You have the best chance of scoring goals and dominating the game if you have possession. To win possession, you need your best tacklers and your best people who can retain the ball, who can chase the ball, who can press and pressure all over the pitch because this DM here doesn't necessarily stay here. He pressures high in the pitch. He wins the ball. He shadows your McAllister. He shadows your Sobersly or Curtis Jones or Graham Birch or whoever, and if they lose the ball, he gets it back. He shackles them. He leads the press. You need the experienced head in there. You need the game winner. Didi Haman came on in the Champions League final to shackle Kaká and the rest is history. Gerard could therefore go forward and roam and wow, he scored the first goal to bring us on that miraculous comeback. May 2005, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Harry Kiel started that one, we went offensive to start with. The position of Kaká, as Rafa Benitez mentioned, in that one-to-one -one interview with Carragher, the position of Kaká caused us absolute hassle and Gerard just could not cope with him in the first half. We could not contain Kaká. Similarly, Coop Miners will roam around. You need Wataru Endo to chase him, stop their play, get the foot in, win the ball back, win the ball back, 
G up the crowd, G up the team. With Endo there, you got the security blanket, knowing that Van Dijk and Kanate have that third pivot in between the centre backs if necessary. You waste McAllister in that position. The only alternative to Endo, Endo there is McAllister, and you don't want to sacrifice McAllister's vision and attacking prowess to chuck an extra midfielder like a Curtis Jones or a Graven Birch at this stage, I believe, unless you want to put Harvey Elliott in there because he's he's a great player as well. With Tyler Endo, Biggie comes in because he's a big game player in our biggest games. We need someone to win the ball back and give it to players that can make a difference. Now, our two midfielders, right? McAllister will be one of them for sure. Now, McAllister's played on the right-hand side in the last few weeks, and he's been immense, right? Going down the channel, crossing, chip ball to Nunes, hitting in, running around the outside, playing the ball through the lines, playing the ball over the top. But McAllister does not start on the right-hand side for this game. McAllister starts on the left-hand side for this game because you now have... Your playmaker on the right, Trent Alexander-Arnold, who pivots to six. Whether you like it or not, he pivots to that six position because he wants to make an influence. However, this is my tactics, not Klopp's tactics, and he will pivot there, but not often. Therefore, I put Sobersai here because what we have with Sobersai is a maturity. The energy, the brains, the bromance with Trent to allow Trent to get into that half wing back position. Every time Trent transitions here, Sobersai covers. Sobersai is the intelligent shadow that covers and is a pseudo right back. Now you may say we're wasting Sobersai here, but he has not shown the penchant for being the creative outlet, being the playmaker, chipping the ball through, hitting the ball through the lines. He drives with pace and purpose and then drives the ball across like a fullback, like a Connor Bradley. His shot is great, but he needs to be set up and he's not getting the right touch in and amongst the positions to shoot first time and let fly. He is intelligent, he has great energy, he's got maturity, he's a captain, and he will be disciplined enough to allow Trent to get into that half position, him and Endo covering this line, which allows Van Dyke to scout, scout the pitch and hit the long balls as well. He can cover, he can cover, they can break the lines laterally, and Kanate can run through as well, providing that extra body. They're not getting you through that side easily because Kanate, Sobersly, and Trent actually is quite effective at shutting down that right-hand side. Sobersly does a wreck, remarkably good job in the wing back, right full back position, very responsible, like a Henderson, like a Milner. Therefore, McAllister is given free roam to roam in and amongst the deep lying playmakers, the deep lying anchormen of Atalanta, hitting those pockets, hitting those pockets, because we don't play with a number 10, but you can get into that left pocket, and it's going to be very, very important, okay? Because if I'm going to say that we're going to transition Trent here, what is the purpose of Trent? We need delivery, we need constant delivery, quality delivery, okay? Because Van Dyke will push up, Canato will push up, Robertson will always push up. And I want Robertson to go around the outside. I want Robertson to get into the half space. I want Robertson to whip it in first time, get to the byline, play the ones, twos with his left winger and whip it in, okay? And what is the purpose of it? You need finishers who can get on the end of the ball. It's not necessarily a header. It's someone who can run with the right timing to get on the end of the balls. There's another advantage of playing Trent Alexander-Arnold here. And we haven't had this in the last few weeks because of the absence of Trent. I play Darwin Nunes on the left wing. Now, okay. Lucho Diaz is an absolute menace, a force, a hurricane when he's on the run. He dribbles, but he's not got a very natural passing game. He does not pass. And Darwin Nunes, for all his faults, does try to play his mates in, does try to pass, does not always try to do it on his own. He knows his limitations and he does try to pass the ball. But more importantly, when you have Darwin Nunes on the left-hand side, I'm just going to erase this for now, right? You have Darwin Nunes on the left. You have Sobosai starting this position. You have Trent starting in this position. Straight away, their offside line is pushed miles back because there's no one, no way, anyone in the Atlanta team or in world football that has an easy time against Darwin Nunes with the ball in behind into that channel. They must play a deep offside line. And more importantly, when they play a man marking system, which they completely befuddled us in the first leg, you rely on individual brilliance or you create as many mismatches as possible. Now, in terms of physicality and pace and athleticism, Darwin Nunes outranks, outstrips Luis Diaz and Cody Gakpo and Diogo Jota and anyone else you want to put on the left. He is a menace and a force and he has got a good left foot delivery down the line. So if Trent is on here, that ball in behind the Nunes is always an outlet, always an outlet in any given position. Kanate can ping one there, but more likely I want Trent or Sobosly to ping it into that gap, okay, to Nunes to start onto. Now if the opposition starts deep, that's bad for them as well because when you get the ball to Nunes defeat he's got the ability to run inside or beat him for sheer pace without skill and he's got some techers as well you can't stand off him because he'll beat you on the sprint building up a head of steam and running and you can't be too tight to him or he'll twist and run in behind as well okay that is a weapon a constant weapon that this right-sided center back of the Atlanta backline 
has to has to help that full back or the wing back depending on how Atlanta set up okay so that's my weapon and Darwin Nunes is one of the key players Trent Darwin Nunes two functions to get us up on the pitch and off we go in behind enemy lines now you need to convert your chances and we all know that Diogo Jota is the one in our team who we can class as that finisher god like fowler like prowess in terms of sniffing a chance hopefully he's shaken off the cobwebs that rust that scuffed shot against crystal palace straight at opposition get his composure against arsenal put one on the arse put two on the arse and just push push it in pass it in pass it in right Diogo Jota starts on the left. An advantage of Jota on the left is these two can interchange. If Darwin Nunes needs to go, Jota can go outside. And this is going to be a common trait that Darwin Nunes cuts into the left half space because he's got a tasty, tasty shot. You ask me, right? Cody Gakpo, Darwin Nunes, Lucho Diaz cutting inside, bending it on the right hand side. I still think Darwin Nunes got the best shot there. Lucho Diaz loves to do it. He goes over the bar, it goes wide. Gakpo's got a great shot, but he hasn't got the attributes that Darwin Nunes has to get into that pocket to really shoot. And Darwin Nunes is really, really good at that bench shot. He's done it for Benfica time and time again. And Jota is very comfortable drifting out to the left. Now, if Jota drags the defenders out wide, Darwin Nunes has got enough pace, physicality, and technique to do that, to do that again and again. Alternatively, the reverse ball slotting in Jota. Jota can cut inside, and he's very good as a near post shooter as well. So you've got an avenue as well, or he can slot it to the right winger, okay? So my setup here is designed to get Darwin Nunes in and behind to pen back the opposition and to pen back the offside line which means everyone can press and McAllister in these pockets is super super dangerous to thread something in and behind to Nunes to into Jota out to the right wing here as well. Sobersai is a long range shooter but if Sobersai is covering Trent is a long range shooter and Trent can also play make from the short position sliding in the right winger playing it in behind the lines to Jota playing it along the lines to Darwin Nunes to hit across to Jota. Everything revolves around getting the ball to Jota give him the chances we will convert many many goals with Jota on the pitch. Jota is also a great substitute as well, but I want him starting because if anyone on the pitch I want the ball to fall to, I want it to be Diogo Jota or McAllister because they're more than likely going to finish it, okay? Anything drops in around the outside here, I want Trent or Sobersly. More likely Trent. I actually, actually think Trent's shooting ability may be better than Sobersly, even though Sobersly's got that silky technique. He doesn't have the confidence that Trent does just to smack it, just absolutely welly it, wham, okay? So Trent is going to be a force and sure, for defensive solidarity here and Sobersai can go in half space and Sobersai can do what Trent does as well but I think Trent has more playmaking ability than Sobersai currently and Sobersai is more of your physical athlete box to box responsible lad defensively responsible but the good thing is both of these can operate in that position and be very very effective okay so in that half space they're whipping it that's why I want Trent here and he'll be a key player you talk about all our forward line who can Make a difference on the end of crosses. Make a difference in the air. Win the aerial duels. Fight in the air. Jota's got a great leap. Darwin Nunes has got a great leap. Lucho Diaz has a decent leap as well, and he's decent in the air. But I actually back Jota and Darwin Nunes over Gakpo and Lucho Diaz as aerial threats. Mo Salah, not even in conversation for an aerial threat. Okay, we missed Sadio Mane. He was an absolute beast in, in the air as well. That, to me, is a winning combination. But conversely, you don't always have to go on the right-hand side. And our right-hand side is actually set up to be very, very effective because Robertson in this position with McAllister play the short ball, in you go, one, two, in and around, which allows Nunes in the half space, as I said again, play Robertson out. Similarly, if Robertson is coshed in and McAllister chooses the 10 position, Nunes is here, that out ball in and around, out into that same space again to Darwin Nunes to run into, that is crucial. As I said again, no matter all his flaws, no defender can live with him, even Kyle Walker on occasion, when he just bursts with physicality and pace and can hold up the ball here and you play from there. Play the ball back to Robertson, who can whip the ball first time. He goes in here, whips the ball first time. Who's there? Jota or the right winger on the back post. Anything falls out is a Trent and McAllister or sort of slight if Trent is in this position as well. Endo covering to win back the ball. Endo's only function here is to win back the ball, give it, give it, give it, give it, help solidify the midfield and give it, give it, give it, okay? I have omitted the right winger because this is going to be a very, very, very tough decision for me because <clears throat> big game player, Mo Salah, Diogo D Jota. The whole system is designed for Jota to finish, Darwin Nunes cause menace, pin back the offside line. Now, traditionally, when you need a goal, Mo Salah gets the goals. Mo Salah needs a lot of chances to get the goals and I don't want him to overshadow the options to Jota because I really want the balls to fall to Jota. As obvious as that sounds, Jota needs to be the one on the end of the balls because obviously he is the most reliable one to slot it in and finish it in. 
apart from Nunez or, or Salah here. The problem with Salah is he can't beat the player these days out and around the outside. Even the ball is hit into space, he holds up the ball too long. He's very, very one-footed. He's very, very hesitant to use right foot, even when right foot shot is the obvious shot. He cuts inside, okay, and now he's looking to hit a line ball to the player who might give it back to him to shoot. He's got to be given the ball in around his position first time to slot it in. That seems to be his bread and butter this season. He can't seem to make the shooting opportunity in his own. And when he does make the shooting opportunity, he's not hitting it. He's not hitting the target. It's going over, it's weak, or it's at the keeper, okay? His shot is not too strong. So historically, you go to Salah because you need the big game player there. I feel as though I can't justify playing Mo Salah in this system with the intention of what I want to do. The three key players in my formation, my strategy, is Darwin Nunes, Diogo Jota, Trent Alexander-Arnold. If it were me, i start Harvey Elliott here. And there's three reasons I start Harvey Elliott here, right? He wants it so bad that he will do the tracking back, right? He will chase the player back. He will hassle, he harasses. He sprints like a madman. Sure, he comes on fresh as a substitute. But if he sprints back and we win the ball back between Endo, Kanate, Elliott, Trap, straight away, Trent, run your ass off. Sobosly, run your ass off. Trent, get into that pocket. Sobosly, run your ass off. Anyone in there, right? And he has the ability to pick out that ball into the half space, whether it's cutting the lines to McAllister, into Trent, into the 10 pocket position, Mazala position, out and around to Sobosly, Sobosly and Trent interchangeable. He will bust his gut to get back and win the ball. And in that triangle, in that trap, play the ball to McAllister, to Trent, Sobosly. Also, additionally, let's reset again. Let's reset again, okay? We'll put them in their natural positions here. Somehow, Elliot seems to have a better understanding of getting the ball under and doing something with it than Salah in the last few weeks. Now, Salah is obviously better than Elliot in almost every attribute except right foot. Elliot's right foot is better, and I believe Elliot's shot. He's got a harder shot than Salah at the moment, and Elliot has better vision. Elliot's more of a playmaker, shunted out to the right wing, a right sided eight. He's a playmaking wide player that Salah has become lately. He's become a playmaking wide player lately. However, I think that when you hit the ball out to Elliot or on a short pass, hit the ball to Elliot. Elliot seems to get it more under control, jinking, 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 and look for the left footed cross also into that space to Nunez, into Jota position, into a McAllister, which allows the Trent overlap because he can hold up the ball and play in the lines as well, which Salah can do. But I feel as though I would bank on Elliot's maturity, his form, his endeavour his hard work, and I would give him the benefit of the doubt to make something because he is not the key player. We are not overloading the right to make the right person shoot cutting inside because he has got the shot as well. Shoot at knee post, shoot it, shoot at far post as well. But I'm looking for him to play in Trent, play in Sober Sly, get the ball, set the traps, play in the McAllister, play in the Nunes, play in the Jota. I want him to be the playmaker on the right hand side because it's all around getting Jota the opportunities and getting Darwin Nunes penned in against that full back, against the right side of centre back, causing havoc. Because when you play out of McAllister and you have a line of McAllister, Sober Sly, and Trent, and a pseudo Elliott, or you know, it can be interchangeable, any one of these can slot into any given position this is why it's so effective because they are flexible that's what i want to see i really really want to see that and that is my idea for how to win the game and you need endo you need van dyke you need Kanati to win the ball recycle the ball you need robertson to burst up and down and deliver the ball in as well and when you're looking at delivery right robertson to jota or around the outside to nunez or sober slider back post to try to shunt it across as well but most importantly on the right hand side trent and sober slider to jota and nunez is the game winning conditions for me you get them into dangerous positions and you give them the chances and they will score nunez maybe not leading the line but jota can do it responsibly cutting inside here cutting inside into this position doing a cross hitting it whacking it looking for the rebounds pen them in recycled ball win the ball that's my recipe for winning. And then if it doesn't work, you have a Cody Gakpo to replace a Darwin Nunes doing exactly what he did in the last game. You have a Mo Salah to replace a Harvey Elliott with anger, with absolute anger that he didn't start, frustration. And no matter what, we got to win the game. We've got to get through it. It's not about personal accolades or, or metrics or goals. We got to, got to, got to win the game, okay? So angry Salah coming on. Graham Birch, I don't know. Too hit and miss, too inconsistent for me. Curtis Jones, at this moment in time, not his early season form, slows down the play too much and hasn't got the confidence to play the ball through the lines and do what you need to do. He's too tidy and plays within himself for now. And when we're in desperation, needing four goals, three goals at least, I don't see Curtis Jones there unless you play a different formation whereby you need to retain the ball in opposition half to work the chances, work the chances. But I don't want to work the chances. I want to bombard the enemy 
opposition territory with balls that they cannot easily defend, make them as uncomfortable and as nervous as possible, get that early goal and just keep battering and battering and battering and returning the pressure on them because they're going to have to break through Van Dijk, Endo and Kanate on this side with McAllister sitting in front with Trent in the half space, Sobersai covering as well, which leaves Darwin Nunes and Jota to Rome and Crit Havoc, Elliot getting on the ball and playing them in behind and Robson bursting up and down the whole match. That's my ethos for this particular match, my philosophy, my tactics and what I would like to see happen. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with my setup, my ideas for this play with the personnel that we got. We can facilitate this game plan because we have Trent, we have Nunes, we have Jota. Nunes on the left, Jota up front and Trent at right back. Sobosai covering for Trent which allows Robertson to go up and down the left because he's the only left-footed one there. Darwin Nunes going into the half space, McAllister in the pockets causing havoc, Endo retaining the ball, winning the ball and Elliot being a roaming playmaker from the right wing position because ultimately Soberstein and Trent are going to dominate the right sided half spaces. Okay, That's what I want to do against what I think Klopp will do. Now here's what I think Jurgen Klopp will do. Now Jurgen Klopp is a man of integrity, the father figure, the ultimate man manager. Players will die for him because he deserves it, right? He's really shown love and respect to many, many players and he plays his way and he's garnered a lot of success. Not to say that I'm not a man of integrity, but I care about the result more than anything, right? If I succeed and Liverpool do well, by nature, everyone, you got to follow me and back me and respect my decisions because I won the game. If we lost the game, we don't qualify against Atlanta, sure. Salah will be miffed and mad and whoever else will knock on my door and go, hey, boss, you didn't play me in the biggest game. I'm out. Whatever. Hasta la vista, baby. Or oh, much I'll worm my way out, but one more. You know I'm saving you for the Premier League, lad. Get you that golden boot. It's all about setting you up for those chances in the Premier League, baby. You gotta get the top score. You can do it, my man. I don't know, it's obvious. I just wanna win this particular game. I'm, I'm one game at a time, similar to Klopp. Okay, here's what Jurgen Klopp will do. Um, big game player. He's not gonna kill Mo Salah's confidence or motivation, but I think he will take him off. He will hook him if it's not working. Mo Salah starts on the right-hand side. He always starts on the right-hand side. Who starts on the left? I think he goes Luis Diaz because Luis Diaz, um, for all his faults as well, um, there has to come a time where he just hits every shot on target and it goes in. Just goes in. His luck has got to turn. Hopefully, is this particular game. He is our best dribbler. He can bring the threat to opposition, drive at them. The question is who starts in the middle. We always play better when Darwin Nunes is on the pitch. But Darwin Nunes at the moment is a little bit confused. Cody Gakpo deserves to start on the left. I don't think he does it. I think he goes Diogo Jota. I think he starts with Jota, Luis Diaz, Salah, the three midgets, the three chibis, the three small ones, the three minimis. Um, because quick football interchanging, they all have a bit about them and they can all play across the whole front line. Actually, Salah doesn't really play on the left-hand side, but you know what I mean. He goes for this because... He thinks that Salah has to play big game player, getting most of our goals. Lucho Diaz is the best dribbler, the best threat from the left hand side. And Jota the Slotter is our finisher. Any chances, similar to me, that drop in and around the half spaces, Jota will bury, will finish, or create uh, an opportunity. McAllister will definitely start. I think of the same philosophy, Endo has to start because otherwise you look at McAllister deeper. The philosophy of getting McAllister in that sixth role is flawed because sure, he can play the ball forward, but Endo can also play the ball forward. Don't discredit Endo's playmaking ability, hitting the ball through the lines. Just because he's had a bad few weeks doesn't take away the fact of what actually happened in some previous big matches. Endo can progress it to Sobosly, to McAllister, to Curtis Jones, to Graven Birch, to Harvey Elliott, or anything like that. Now, this is a conundrum, right? He could play Harvey Elliott here. There is a world where he plays Harvey Elliott and Salah because Elliott, Elliott is the best player in a whole squad at finding Salah into the right position. Getting Salah on the ball that Salah's comfortable with to actually make something happen, right? To, to shuffle, 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 scoot along. And Elliott can roam around the outside as well of Salah. So there is a world where that happens. But I think, I think Sombersly's got to play for the same reason that I chose Sombersly is to cover Trent. Now, Klopp's Trent will pivot inside much more than my Trent. I don't need Trent to do that so, so much. Therefore, McAllister goes in this slot because McAllister is the, the favoured child, the Wunderkind, the, the love child of, of Jurgen Klopp and Pep Linders and, you know, whatever Ginger Ninja you find anywhere, maybe Risa. Um, left back, Robertson, big game experience. Rob Turson. <laughs> Robertson, Van Dijk, sort of straight in here. Alison Becker goes straight in there. Now, can Konate play straight away? I think in a big game you play you're international, you play Kanate because Quanta is still young, but he could, could start Quanta, you know, he could start Quanta. That could be a, a change. But I'm pretty, pretty confident that the only potential changes for this lineup is Nunes for Jota because Jota is very, very good off the bench. Very, very good off the bench. So Nunes potentially for Jota, Harvey Elliott for Sobosly, Quanta for Kanate. Joe Gomez, as well as he's playing, 
somehow I think he misses out here. I think you've got to go for the throat and you've got to get the goals and therefore Trent is your best playmaker from deep position. Robertson runs up and down the line, similar to Lucha Diaz cutting in. Robertson's got to get into those half spaces, right? He's got to got to work those spaces in an overlap um, in, in that situation. Soberside will be predominantly the bigger shooter on this side just because of the fact that Trent transitions with Endo into the base, which means Van, Van Dyke and Kanate shunted off into side channel defensive duty, right? Covering that half crescent, half crescent there. Soberside covers that gap. So you have your box, you have your box. McAllister with the cute chip balls, with a long shot as well, with the vision to play someone in. Lucio Diaz roaming, roaming in. If he does roam in, Robertson has got to always overlap or Jota's got to underlap on the, on the outside at the top position to allow Lucio Diaz in. And in this kind of formation here, it's very interesting because Salah can play that slide ball to Jota running in, which I love. It's so delicious. But Lucio Diaz can play that slide ball this way to Salah running in. You have Sobos line, half space, McAllister for recycling, Robertson for anything out wide, and Trent roams out wide when we're in the push, in the push position, okay? So it's this, this kind of shape, similar, somewhat similar philosophy. However, in the absence of Darwin Nunes, you just do not have that ultimate ability to no matter what, smash that space and just create from that position. You just lack that ability to work from that position because Lucho Diaz will get the ball there but he's not as likely to go around the outside and he just hasn't been effective I don't think there's been many goal scored many goals scored from this position when Lucho Diaz gets in that position Jota is more likely to create something from that position than Lucho Diaz which is that ball or that ball to Salah but Salah's got to get his shooting boots on because no matter what you know he's going to sniff the chances with off the ball running He's stronger than Elliot in sniffing the chance to dart in, dart in, in around six yard, in around a penalty box area. I feel we will get a penalty. I feel we will get a penalty in this game and therefore Salah will probably take it. I'd, I'd prefer McAllister to take it. He's probably got something in his clause, in his contract or something. If he wants the ball, he'll take it. And McAllister's a good lad. He's a teammate. He'll, he'll give him the ball. But ultimately, it's more Van Dyke and Konate covering the widths, Endo being that third utility auxiliary, centre back, Libero sweeper formation, allowing McAllister to push forward, Trent in the box in front with Endo, but ultimately he can rotate so McAllister can go to the base, which puts Trent and Sobersly on top of the box, which is actually menacing as well because they're both long shooters, um, but ultimately it's geared towards getting Salah into the half space, getting Lucio Diaz into half space, and it's probably going to be Sobersly around the outside. I really like Trent in this position, but he just doesn't transition there, and especially in the Klopp formation these days, Klopp is more likely to venture around the base of midfield, and ultimately it's, it's that kind of shape that Liverpool Liverpool look to play. Now, what do Atlanta op offer in opposition? They work really, really good triangles and they're really intelligent in their man marking because when a person inverts and shifts into a different position, what they do is they get someone to run the cross, okay? They don't follow the man particularly. They run in a way that blocks the lines of passing to the opposition, to the McAllister, the other one, to the Salah, to the Sobersly and a man marking is blocking the lines while marking as well. So what we've got to be very, very keen on doing is winning the individual battles and making those mismatches, as I said. Usually before in previous seasons, you have your Salah against 1v1 against their defender, but lately they don't even need to double team him. They put one player on him and he just struggles to get past. He junk balls it, goes in street ball kind of fight, which is not his forte right now. It's more Luis Diaz's forte, but I just want balls in and around the box to drop to Jota to, to do something with it. And that is likely Klopp's philosophy. And if it's not winning, 60 minute mark, Curtis Jones for Sobersly, Joe Gomez for Andy Robertson, Gakpo for Luis Diaz, Nunes for Jota. Probably keeps he probably keeps Luis Diaz and, and Salah on longer because they've got the energy and to keep running and driving and making something happen. But it reeks of desperation if we ultimately see Salah in the centre forward position, which means that Gakpo is on here and someone like an Elliot or a Nunes is, is on, the, on the other side. I don't want to see Gakpo on the right wing position. And in that position, I, I fear for us ever so slightly because when Salah is up front in his own, it's a little bit of desperation because he's not the most clinical finisher. He's not the fastest these days. And the chances need to be made from in that box that he can hit first time and he's only going to hit it left foot as well. But yet to be seen. Klopp is the maestro, he's the master. I'm still confident in Liverpool FC progress very very confident in my team we've had harder tests before that Barcelona come back right against the Messi against the Suarez Coutinho Busquets Alba brilliant brilliant players in in that team right that Dortmund match where we had the Sacco and Lovren at the back and you know Aubameyang got in to, to score and Royce Marco Royce why don't we sign Royce he would have been great in this formation he scored as well right we came back in in that particular match Sacco header Lovren header as well um 
Milan 2005. That's the greatest comeback because that team, my goodness, that team. Dida, Maldini, Nesta, Yap, Stam, Cafu, Gattuso, Perlo, Seidorf, Kaka, Shevchenko, Hernan Crespo. Off the bench, people like Serginio running right down the left hand side. You've got Ambrosini, you've got John Dal Thomason, you've got players, superb players, absolutely amazing, amazing players, right? All through the squad. And we did it. We did it. With Vladimir Smitsa on, with Milan Barash on, Gibril Cisse, the Lord of Frodsham, Luis Garcia, Harry Q went off, Finnan couldn't continue, Jimmy Traore, Risa, Risa, Gerard, right? Alonso, Haman, heroes, Dudek, Jersey Dudek. We had absolute heroes in that whole team. And like for like, maybe only Gerard gets into that Milan team. And as a function as well, sometimes you might not even pick a Gerard, although you probably probably pick a Gerard. But wow. We can do it. We're Liverpool FC. Come on, guys, believe. Liverbird all the way. If you like this video, smash a like. Help me beat the algorithm for sure. Need to get these videos seen. I've got lots and lots of great content coming up. Great, great kind of um, membership prospects as well. I really want to offer something back to you guys that will come very, very soon. I'm working it out in my head at the moment. Moving house, one month left until I move into the new house and set my studio up. Lots of content coming, lots and lots of content coming. Promise it's going to be a fun, fun year. Thank you so much. Subscribe if you haven't already. Mizaki Manichi Ban. Peace. Love you all. Janet. Thank you.